Hi everyone, welcome to another How I Made This. Today I'll be showing you how I add music and sound effects to my animations in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Typically the entire animation will be finished when I reach this step, but there's still a way to go for this one. So instead of exporting as a single file from my animation software, I'll export as individual clips so they're easier to replace as I complete more shots. Before I start, I want to make sure that my project settings are the same as my animation. To check it, go to File, Project Settings, and in the Master Settings tab, you can adjust the project dimensions and frame rate. With that done, I will click and drag my audio clips and exported animation from their folders into the media pool. I can then add them one by one into the timeline or highlight them all and drag them in that way. As my shots are all named correctly, they will import in their numbered order. I haven't put anything together for the end card yet, but once that's finished, it'll go in this gap here. To stop my animation or audio from moving, I want to lock these tracks by clicking the padlock icon. Any small change can throw off the timing, so I want to make sure these are fixed. In the media pool, you can see some shots are still a work in progress. But once they're finished, I can right click on these clips and from the menu, select replace selected clips. If I have exported the final version from my animation program, I can then easily swap it out to update the project. To keep everything organized, I can right click on the media pool panel and select create new bins. I'll use these to organize my sound clips, finished shots, unfinished shots, and music. I can zoom in or out with the plus or minus just here and move through the timeline using the sliders. The two tools I use the most are the selection mode tool, where the keyboard shortcut is A, and the blade edit mode, where the keyboard shortcut is B. With these tools, I can easily cut and select areas of my clips to move or delete. If I have the auto track selector activated on the track, the rest of the clips after the deleted selection will move to fill the gap. This also affects the rest of the tracks that have this feature activated, so just remember to turn it on or off as needed. I mostly use this feature when I'm editing vlogs and cutting tutorial footage, as I don't want to waste time moving clips individually. Today, I'll be working on adding music and sound effects to this shot. If I'm not recording and editing my own clips, which I go over in these two videos, I'll search for what I need on freesound.org. You just need an account to download them. To the right, you can see there's different types of licenses for the sounds. I like to use Creative Commons, but will also use Attribution. Just make sure you make a list of all the clips you use to reference in the description or credits of your video later. For this shot, I wanted a clip to suit a busy street that had traffic sounds and muffled talking. The second sound I wanted was a running engine that could repeat throughout the shot to add detail to the cars that passed. Once I'd chosen my clips and downloaded them, I clicked and dragged them into the media pool and then onto the project timeline. As the clip was a lot longer than what I needed, I used the selection mode and blade edit mode tools to cut and delete everything I didn't need. With the clip selected, I went to the audio tab to adjust the volume as it really overwhelmed my story time audio. I like to listen to the audio with headphones so I can really hear the details and get the adjustments right. Minus 27 was too low, so I played it through multiple times, raising the volume until I felt it was at a good level and didn't overpower anything else. You can use the audio transitions, but most of the time I'll use keyframes. Just move the playhead to the place you want, Hit the diamond shaped button beside volume and change the value here. I'll use four keyframes to create a fade in and fade out. Two at the beginning and two at the end. The first and fourth will be around minus 40, while the second and third will be around minus 18. I'll then play it through and if the audio starts too abruptly or the fade in isn't smooth enough, I'll stretch out the ends and drag the keyframes along the clip. To remove a keyframe, I can click and delete it, or use the arrows beside the diamond button to move from one keyframe to the next, and hit the button again to get rid of it. I'll then do the same for the engine sound clip, adding it to the timeline and cutting it up into different sections, using keyframes to add a fade in or out, so the audio matches the cars that travel across the shot. Once I'm happy with the sound effects, I can organize the clips into a single track by highlighting them, right clicking and selecting create new compound clip. If you've ever used After Effects, this is like a pre-composition and you can open it up by going to the media pool and right clicking and selecting open in timeline and edit the clips from there. 
I can do the same to go back to the main project as well. To finish off this shot, I wanted to add in some music. This will play beneath the sound effects and help create a smoother transition from the first scene to the second and link together the shots afterwards. I'll try and find music that will match the mood or theme I want to go for. And most of the time I'll search for a YouTube's audio library, which you can access on the left hand side of your YouTube studio. You can favourite tracks you like, check the licences and download them here. Once I've chosen my music, I'll then bring that track into DaVinci Resolve and add keyframes and adjust the volume until I'm happy with it. Although I still have a lot to learn with sound effects and how I add and treat clips in my animations, it's a process I really enjoy and I'll repeat these steps for every shot in my animation. This process does take quite a lot of time and once I've finished the animation, adding sound effects and music will be something that I put a lot of effort into building up the layers, checking it through, and sending exports to friends for feedback. To export the final version, which will be uploaded to YouTube, I'll go to Deliver, and then along the left-hand side, change the file name, where I'm going to save it, and make sure that the screen size and frame rate are correct. I'll click Add to Render Queue, it'll appear on the right, and then I'll select Render All. Once that's finished, I'll check over the animation one more time, send it to friends to make sure I haven't missed anything, and then it's ready to be uploaded. And that is the final step in my process for making this animation. I'll be continuing the how I made this series with other animations, styles and techniques. You can check out the playlist so far here and in the description. Be sure to subscribe if you find this helpful, and I'll be back with more animations and tutorials real soon. Bye!